Thousands of people fall each year, resulting in harm, distress, and in some cases, death. No. No. Most of these falls happen in the community and are preventable. There are a number of things people can do to keep themselves safe on their feet. Regular exercise to build strength and flexibility is one of those things. When someone has a fall, it can have a profound effect on them, particularly if they end up with a fracture. It really affects their confidence and they get less and less willing or able to move around and be active. Incidence of, of ending up in hospital is quite high. The, um, the chance of actually dying from a fall is also quite high. And the reason for that is probably we have people surviving now with significant heart disease, lung disease, who previously would have died before they fell and fractured their neck of femur, but are now living long enough to fall and fracture. And it's very important with that increased frailty that people maintain their activity. There are lots of trials now showing various methods of preventing falls. For example, exercise programs specifically designed for fall prevention cut falls by about a third. You know, keeping exercise levels higher and um, doing things specifically that will help improve gait and balance will definitely decrease falls. There are well-developed programs for fall prevention, for example, the Otago Exercise Program. Keep your eyes at eye level and keep breathing into the tummy. And the person is taken through that in a graded way, so they're started at a level which is appropriate to them and then gradually progressed from that. So it's important that that's done under some supervision. Remember, keep that back leg parallel to the floor. Yeah. Just off the floor. Jack, back leg parallel to the floor. That's better. The research that I've been involved in has been focused on the steady as you go falls prevention um, classes which are gait and balance and some walking practice trying to strengthen the legs and increase people's balance so that they decrease their risk of falling is key. And slowly down. Steady as you go has been going for about nine years now. We have over 30 classes in Dunedin and about 14 in Otago and three in Southland. The aim is to get as many older people as possible to join, 65 plus, male and female, to prevent falls because falls are the most common cause of injury for older people. We concentrate on the legs to, to help prevent the falls, make the you know, muscles in our legs stronger and keep our balance better. When you get older you need to focus on particular muscles, which the classes do, to strengthen your legs and get that balance really sorted out. One of the exercises that they do is a sit to stand. Do about 20 sit to stands, always being aware to keep your knees apart on the way up and the way down. And they'll do 20 to 30 consecutive sit to stands, hands across their chest. If you've not tried that, I would <laughs> say try it because it's not easy. So the lower leg strength becomes, you know, quite significantly improved and that's what we showed in our research. These kind of tests that we did, which was testing sit to stand and testing some of the leg strength, were significantly improved in people who were participating in these classes. How many forgot to? There's seven. Eleven. That's all I love it. Oh, we've got a wee way to go yet. <laughs> some people just come along because they, they think it would be a good idea. Um, other people are referred by physios or practice nurses, the hospital, perhaps someone who's just had an operation or they've um, had a fall. Some people can see for themselves they will benefit, particularly if they've read about it. And those, of course, that are recommended by their doctor, well, they are doing it on advice. If you go to people and say, we want you to undertake this program to decrease your risk of falling, the older people often say, I'm not at risk of falling, don't need to participate. It's my next door neighbour who's at risk, not at me. But if you stress the point that this increases your independence, increases your likelihood of remaining in the home by yourself, increases your general health, then people are much more likely to take up the programme. You know, that's the big thing for me. I don't want to be a burden or, or you know, looking like I've got something wrong with me. No, and you meet other people in the same sort of situation as yourself. Yeah, that's yourself. a good thing. That's and good. you think to yourself, well, if they do it, so, you know, why can't I? Once they've started coming, most of them don't stop. They just keep coming. They tell me that they can move around more easily or they can get out of a chair more easily. It improves their leg strength, improves their balance, 
does decrease their risk of falling and increase their confidence. You actually feel it. Yes, you do. And class leaders are volunteers from within the, the group itself, so they know the participants before they step forward and volunteer to become a leader. And lean back against the wall and do the squats that way. So these are people who are quite frail and have falls risk when they come in and they have been so successful in getting these classes all around Dunedin that are led by peer leaders. And they teach the classes in a very organized, systematic fashion, so they do stick with the program. And you're keeping your back straight, which is what we're meant to do. And the people who do step forward and volunteer to become a peer leader, they love it, they enjoy it. So for me, yes, it's, it's something I never anticipated in retirement, but it's been wonderful. I was originally trained by the physiotherapy school here in Dunedin from the Otago University and now that we've had this going for quite a while we're learning to train the, the peer leaders ourselves. We've got a disc made by Age Concern and Heels it's been ground. put together by physiotherapists because it is important to, to do the moves as the instructions are on the disc. Well, they get together once a year and have these um, refresher courses through Age Concern Otago and it gives these peer leaders an, an opportunity to talk with each other and share their stories and then they go back to their classes and share this information and so I think the peer aspect of it is really some of the glue that holds those classes together. One thing we do is we test everybody's leg strength and balance when they first enter the program. After 10 weeks I catch up with them and if they've been attending the program regularly I will retest their leg strength and balance with our three tests and we usually always see an improvement in those scores. After 10 weeks you, they come back and assess you again where you have to sit with your arms folded and then stand up, run a measured course, get back to your chair, it's not a long course and that took me something like 25-26 seconds. Ten weeks later I could do it in 12. I've definitely noticed uh, an improvement in my mobility, my balance and uh, general well-being. Life is just a little bit easier because they're more mobile, more able, better balance and they can get around, enjoy life better. It has made quite a tremendous difference. I'd had a few falls in the last few years and that was the reason I came and I think it improves your balance. I shuffle around my slippers and I think, oh, I'm forgetting to lift my feet. So we're so much more prone to falls as we get sort of sloppy and older. <laughs> and the reason that I came was because I noticed my walking was deteriorating. I was dragging my feet and staggering a lot when I walk unsteady. I just know that I'm stronger in what I'm doing. And I think mentally it helps me as well because you think about what you've been doing. There's some very interesting work done recently. Uh, in Canada using the Otago Exercise Program showing that it actually improves people's thinking and memory and thought processes as well, their cognitive function. The peer-led aspect of Steady As You Go makes it very dispersible. We can spread it around all over Dunedin, for example. It's in almost every suburb. It makes it feasible for people to actually access these classes, either by walking or organising um, carpooling. Within the group, they often find a, a way to get people there. I might go with somebody for their first trip to a Steady As You Go class and then they'll find someone in the class who can pick that person up as you go. Well, I was formerly Principal of Maniatoto Area School. My lovely wife died about 14, 15 years ago and I was very lonely. I'm up at up a bit of a drive. It's a, slight, it's, a sl it's a rather steep slope but not very much. And I chose this place for a number of reasons. I chose it, I wanted sun, I wanted a view, and I, I wanted to be close to facilities. But I'm, I'm very, very happy here, and I really want to stay here as long as I possibly can. A few years ago, I actually fell getting out of the Fortune Theatre, and I rolled down the steps and hit the proscenium. From there, I'd lost total confidence in getting up and down steps and stairs to the point where I was using a stick all the time. And I went down to my doctor to, to chat about it and she recommended exercise. And I got a pamphlet on this particular strength and balance program. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. 
and it has made a tremendous difference. I no longer use my walking stick, but the class has been of tremendous help. And also socially. I find a very good exercise when you're in the bath is to actually exercise your big toe by turning the hot water tap on. <laughs> I will stay in my home as long as possible, so I guess there are certain things I've got to do to be able to do that. The tomato is gone, and it's 402 for seven. I mean, there's an interesting relationship between age and disability. You can lose, for example, muscle strength, but it doesn't interfere with your function until it reaches a critical level. For example, for you to stand out of that chair, you need a certain amount of muscle strength. When you're young, you only need, only need about 75 to 80% to get out of your chair very quickly. When you're in your 80s, you're often using 100% of your muscle strength to get out slowly. So that means small gains in muscle strength, improved balance, can have, make real gains in terms of maintaining your independence. Excellent. Very good. Yes, we all hate that one. <laughs> it, it just helps keep one from deteriorating as quickly as we do. And it certainly helps with balance. And I find that when I'm standing in a supermarket queue, I'm doing the exercises, you know, the moving from side to side and, and you're aware of all your joints and things. So it's certainly good for you. If you start before you're too bad, it's going to keep you going and you won't get to the point that you might have done if you'd just given up and sat on the settee, would you? If I don't come to the classes, if I have a break over the holidays, my general condition goes back quite rapidly. I was going to Tai Chi but I broke my femur so that was the finish of Tai Chi. So I've gone to two classes a week now with the steady as you go and I'm finding it beneficial. There's a letter here I received just the other day from a lady who was really happy. She says, just another old dear who is finding the age concern exercises a bigger help than I could ever imagine. My legs felt like two logs of wood, but as I did the exercises for legs, I was amazed to find that they really helped. So I do all the exercises for the leg muscles many times every day, and the improvement is nothing short of a miracle. Thanks so much. And this lady is 85 years old. <laughs> And I think these exercise classes such as Steady As You Go, based in the community, have a real viable and, and important role to play in keeping people from falling, for one, and also keeping them living independently in their communities and improving their quality of life. So I think as, if we can develop these and disseminate these even more broadly, it would be to the benefit of all the older adults in New Zealand.